Hi, I'm Scott, and today we're going to talk about killing weeds on Dad It Yourself. Hey, so welcome to the ninth sunny day of 2020 in the Pacific Northwest. Mowed my lawn today. Looks pretty good from afar, but if you start looking close, you start seeing things like that. And over here, I've got a whole bunch of crabgrass. I got a piece right there. I got some over there, two more over there, and then I got all these weeds in my landscape bed. I got that big guy right there, and I got some grasses growing over here in this one. So in the backyard, the lawn looks really good. There's almost no weeds or crabgrass or anything in the lawn itself, but over here in the landscape beds, Got this big mess here, over here on those rocks. I don't know if you can see it. Let me get in the shade. Maybe the camera will move. Jess, there we go. All along in here, and then over here. If you saw my backyard video from last summer, you'll know about this. You can see all that foxtail starting to grow in now. The sun's coming out. So today I'm going to talk about taking care of weeds in your lawn and landscaping using different techniques such as chemicals or even a manual method. There are a variety of ways you can treat weeds. You can use a selective, non-selective, an organic, or a manual method to remove weeds. So let's talk a little bit more about selective versus non-selective. And you should see these two bottles. They're right next to each other at the store and they have similar labeling but you can see this one says kills weeds not the lawn and this one says weed and grass killer okay and they're not talking about crabgrass they're talk not talking about seagrass or whatever they're talking about all grass so what you want to do is use this one where you don't have a lawn places like hardscapes landscape beds sidewalks any place where there's no lawn, you want to use this one directly on your lawn. The difference between these two products is this one has an active ingredient of glycophosphate. This one does not contain glycophosphate. And glycophosphate, while well, it's in Roundup and everybody says Roundup's the best or whatever, is the active ingredient in most weed and grass killers, whether they be from Roundup, Vigoro, uh, Spectracide or any of the other big name uh, lawn care products. So this is what happens when you use a non-selective on your lawn. It kills everything. I mean it did a number on the weeds, don't get me wrong. Right there, look, dead weed. You know, but also dead grass everywhere. So this is why it's important to know the difference between a selective and a non-selective. The whole idea here is protecting your grass. So these two products are known as pre-emergence. What they do is they thwart the growth of new weeds by slow release into the soil. This particular one also has fertilizer in it. So if you're prepared to mow your lawn two to three times a week, you want to use this one. Scott's also has a product called Step One, which does not include fertilizer. So if you're not ready to start your mow, or it's earlier in the season and your soil temperatures are over 50 degrees, go ahead and use just a straight pre-emergent. Uh, the Preen Extended Control, you just put this in your landscape beds or your non-lawn areas and it slowly releases its active ingredient, which is trifluoraline. And this one is pendamethylene into the soils and prevents those weeds from growing in your landscape beds, whether they have mulch or rock or whatever. So the third method is good old fashioned manual labor, where you just grab that weed and you yank it right up out of the ground like that. And the advantage to the preen is that if there's any root bases or anything left in here, that's going to prevent that weed from growing back again. In a situation like this, I'd come at it with a two-pronged approach. 
I would pull the weeds manually first and any weed that had a root break off or I couldn't pull out because it's too close to the surface, then I would use a non-selective chemical on it. Well, in this example, I would try to pull these weeds out manually and then I would use a non-selective. The challenge here is I'm right next to a live plant that I don't want to harm. So you have to be extremely careful when applying a non-selective in that you could damage or kill your landscaping plants. The challenge with this one specifically is I'm dealing with grass, not a broadleaf, which the non-selectives tend to be a little bit more effective with. So I may have to look at another method of killing the grass without killing the plant. So earlier in the video I referred to this as foxtail and actually it's called equicetum or horsetail and there is really no effective way to treat this chemically. Glycophosphate like in Roundup will do what they call an acid burn and it will kill the green parts but it doesn't get transmitted down into the roots and kill the plant. So eventually uh, I'm gonna have to dig this all up and pull all the roots back or as effectively as I can to rid it from this landscape bed. That said, if my neighbor on the other side of this fence has an infection or an infestation of this, it's just gonna come right under the fence and reinfect this landscape bed. So every year I fight it a little bit. I do some manual pulling. I treat it with a non-selective and I do my best to keep it out. It comes right up first part of the spring and then over the course of the summer as the ground dries out and the temperature heats up, it dies off a little bit. Unfortunately, it's starting to kind of find its way out into my lawn and that makes it a little bit tougher to take care of. By mowing it off before it gets to the seed phase, I stop the spread as best I can. So this right here is called Poa Anua and it is a cool season weed, lawn, whatever you want to call it. It does not like the sun or the heat and this will eventually actually die off. The advantage to this is it grows in little clumps and you can go right down in the ground and find the little clump and just pull it right out of the ground like that and it comes out. Um, what I'll do is I'll manually remove the big clumps, I'll treat it with selective and then uh, use a pre-emergent to keep it down as best I can and hopefully I'll fight it off so next spring when it starts there won't be as much and it's a year after year process. So I have this patch of crabgrass right here in my lawn and you would think, okay, you can just treat that with a selective and then follow up with a pre-emergent to make sure it doesn't come back. Well, unfortunately, the Roundup products aren't as effective with the crabgrass that I've found. They have some limited success, but not as effective. So what I use, I use this specricide weed stop with crabgrass killer and it is super super effective um, within five hours you already see it turning brown and within a couple of days it's dead so i'll do this on all of my crabgrass spots just to make sure that i got them and i got them good so here's a real good view of that crabgrass after i sprayed that spectricide crabgrass killer on it you can see all the stalks and leaves are curling together and it's starting to brown up and it's been two days since I sprayed it. Before you use any chemicals, be sure to read, understand, and obey all of the labeling. Failure to do so can cause harm to yourself, your family, your pets, it can harm your lawn, your landscaping, or cause irreparable damage. So if you take your chemicals out of their original containers, be sure to label the new containers with the appropriate warnings and labeling to ensure your safety and the safety of others. As you can see by me, I actually just cut the labels off the old bottles and put them on the new ones. And I will continue to use this one for a non-selective and this one for a selective. I think that's enough talk. Let's take care of some of these weeds.
So in an area like this where I have grass right up next to my lawn, I have a broadleaf here, which I could probably just attack with a non, with a selective, and it would be okay. But where I have grass, which is a little bit more resistant to the non-selective, or the selective, I'll use non-selective, but I'll use this piece of cardboard right here as a barrier to make sure I don't overspray onto the lawn. So in an area like this gravel area where I don't have to worry about getting anything on the lawn, I'm going to use this non-selective and just carpet cover everything that I wasn't able to pull out manually and hopefully that'll kill it and take care of anything that thinks about growing. So in the landscape beds I'll continue to use the non-selective but I'll be careful to stay away from the plants, hitting any leaves or getting close to the trunks to save those plants. So what I consider the most fun is actually using the selective and just spot treating in the lawn. So it's like seek and destroy. Just walk back and forth on the lawn, looking for something that's not supposed to be there and treating it. Let's get this pre-emergent put down in the landscape beds. So the sun's starting to go down, but I'm going to wait on the pre-emergent for the lawn until after my next video uh, where I'll be dethatching, and I'm going to talk about some lawn and mowing techniques, but after three hours, I think I've got my weed problem under control. If you have any questions or suggestions, put those down in the comments. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right over there. Thanks for watching. Data yourself.